Oh. Do you mind if he licks his? I don't mind at his all. balls and penis. Really quick <laughs> no, while, not at while all. we roll. Um, he has like, yeah, balls. Yeah. Yeah. And he eventually he'll stop chewing on my arm and wrist and stuff. Chill out. Just sit. A lot going on. I can't imagine being him and being like, I was. He was locked up abroad only moments ago, and now he's like. Well, let me go into this studio with six cameras. It must be so confusing. <laughs> he doesn't like like any chew. Oh, look at you, Mister. Oh, do you see yourself? Is that what you're looking at? I feel. You know how I'm always like. I think I could get an animal to talk to me. I think this is the one. I really do. Look at this face. He can hear. He knows what I'm saying. <laughs> Hey, Brooke. Hi, Connor. Are you ready to M-A-P? I'm ready to pee. Ignorance is bliss. I'm living in a world of my own, and it's awesome. Oh, I thought I was responsible for 9-11 when I was five. Where were you? In Pennsylvania. Touch grass, might I suggest. We're just going to dive right in today. Cool. Oh, my God. Sorry, I think I threw up. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Um, okay. Well. Do you do it again. I feel like it's it's good luck when you... Are my eyes like swollen shut? No, are mine. No. Mine feel swollen. I know. I think um, maxi bug is like a an allergen. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might need an epi pit. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Maybe like a... You might just need to start taking like Benadryl every day. Walking around, yeah, zombie style. Yeah. Um, do you want to introduce? Him? I want you. Oh, do you want to, want me to introduce the pod? Yeah, introduce the pod. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Brooke and Connor make a podcast. I'm Brooke. I'm Connor, and we're happy to be back and happy to have you here as well. So, Connor, take it away. I don't have anything. You introduce oh, your the friend. Dog. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, I got a. I got. This is Max. He's like kind of relaxing now. Yeah. Um, but I did pick him up recently from the pound. And so he's like part of, he's, it's B and C and M. Mm -hmm. M, M A P. P. It's, it's B and C M squared A P yeah. now. So this is Max. Um, what kind of questions do you have for me about Max at this time? Okay. What, how'd you, what happened? I got a text from somebody. Yeah. They said urgent. We know that you don't have that much going on day to day. Can you go pick up this dog? Right. And I said, <sighs> okay, I'll do it. And then they go, by the way, he's getting put down uh, tomorrow or something. He was like urgent. Local? Yeah. Um, that is like absolutely insane that that really does happen. Like it's not even a myth. Yeah. Like dogs are put down every single day. I'm kind of nervous now that I say put down because they were just like urgently he needs to find a home, but that means like put down, right? Yeah. Or else... That's what, how I got all of my dogs growing oh. up. They were about to be put down. Okay, well then that was Which the case. Which is just like nuts that that is a thing. That was the case. So I, I went and picked them up. Um, and then as I got there, remember that thing that happened to me last time I was talking about getting a dog and I was thinking about like how long dogs live? Uh-huh. And then I was thinking about like, oh, I'm like the sole care provider right. of this, like other, this, this beast. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, how old will I be if he lives to 15? And then I'm like, oh, I'm like about to retire. Right. Like at that age. By the time that he passes on. Mm -hmm. No, Max will meet your kids. Yeah. Frankie could meet mine oh, too. I just got an eye twitch when yeah. you started talking about that. So then I was like, I handed my ID to the woman at the front. And she goes, okay, cool. I was like, and it was, it was like, hmm, do I want to say that? Yeah, probably. No, I don't think so. Okay. It was just like, I was like, what do I need to do? Do you need to like background check me or anything? She goes, no, give me 20 bucks. And I was like, I can just give you twenty dollars and for that dog. And she's like, Yeah. And I was like, Okay. Well, I guess like if they're literally gonna put it down, like, get it out of what, my damn sight. What's the point of even background checking someone? Yeah. Which is also really sad. Yeah, I know, so sad. Yeah. But they, had, it was a great shelter, Lancaster Animal Shelter, and they had so many people coming in and out, and so many like volunteers and stuff. And so the, the, his, he was the only 
dog that I saw that was in a kennel with another dog. So like they were had buds, oh, and then no, I what couldn't. What was happening to the other bud? Got adopted. The next oh, step. thank God. Yeah, because I was about to go. My ass was about to pack back up <laughs> yeah. and head back out because it was making me lose my sleep. Yeah. But he was so good. Actually, when I first picked him up, he was like, I don't need to leave. Right. They like walked him out and he was like trying to go back in. And I was like, why is he trying to go back he in? They're like, loves his buddy. he hasn't eaten today. And because like shelters don't have any cash for food. Uh, I said, this guy is looking snatched. He needs we need to, to eat. volunteer. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Everybody should. Yeah. If you can handle it. Personally, know, I'm thinking actually. back to walking through the shelter and it was making me need to vomit my guts out. Yeah. And then the first dog, I was like, I need to pet all these dogs on the way to see him. And the first one tried to eat my hand. So I continued walking. I didn't pet any other dogs, but yeah. that's okay. Um, took him home. He's like totally the best dog ever. Uh, like off leash even. Because I think he's like so addicted to this young man. Yeah, he is. That like he can't leave my damn side. Right. Um, and he needs to be in my bed every day at 5 a.m. Oh, I So like my that. schedule's changed Does a lot. Does he sleep in your bed throughout is, the night? No, he switches from my bed to my couch to check both sides of my wind my windows on both sides. Okay, That's which is good. like when does he sleep? I guess during the day when I have time to run him right. outside. Right. So wow. he's kind of like a nocturnal bug. Oh, a nocturnal bug. Yeah. That's sweet. Hell yeah! So he's now with us. I'll probably need to figure out sleeping schedule. He's also got the f- hmm. I, mean, I say <laughs> this: the fattest balls I've had, like huge right. balls. So those will be gone soon. Right. And I think he'll chill out and maybe sleep through the night. I think it'll change. I'm sure a lot of people- The are dogs gonna... mellow out once yeah, they, they get neutered. Because I think he's trying to like alpha me. He's, oh. And I'm like, no, I'm I the alpha. Please, please let me be up. the alpha. <laughs> <laughs> please, like I just need to get some damn sleep. Please, I need oh, to be the alpha. he's alpha mode. And then yesterday, like on the beach, I took him to the beach last night and ran him. And he ran, he's so nice to other people that like he's- Sometimes I'm like, did you forget about me just now in 13 right. seconds? And so he like ran up to these people having a picnic and I was like, I'm so sorry. And they're like, uh, no, just can you grab him? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And I ran over. His face couldn't see his head buried balls deep in their Chipotle bag. Oh. And they were like, he's fine, but can you get him away from us immediately? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Fully don't even know how much Chipotle he ate. But he was farting. Last I night, was so. going to say, how was the stomach? Fart city. Fart city. Like, yeah. Like father, like son. I know. Anyways, he's good. We're going to get... He's such a good boy. He's pretty good. Can you believe he was just like locked up abroad no. last week and now he's... Do you know, like, where did the pound find him? No info at this time. None. And he's microchipped to me now. How does the microchip work? So, uh, right, stupid question. Ask Sorry. Elon, right. not me. I don't even... I don't know. How do they get it in? You don't know. Should a we, pill? I don't know. No, it must be like they inject surgically. It? How do you inject a chip? Yeah. Oh, right. via surgically. injection. Oh, In, surgically. No, no, via, via injection. injection. Feature. They just shoot it. I right don't in. get it. I want a chip. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No. I want a chip. Who do you want tracking you? My emergency contact. Who's which your emergency contact? Which changes depending on which festival I'm going yeah. to. Yeah. But um, that would be nice if you could program it like to change. Or like find my friends vibes, like turn it off. I wish I could show you. Um, yeah, like turn it off mm-hmm. and on. I don't need people tracking me. But the thing seven. is, like, you never know if it's really off. You just have That's a chip the thing in about your body. a microchip. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing we know about microchips is you just never know with those things. But I'd like to microchip my children. Why don't we do that? I guess like it's like not legal. I think. It should it's be. It's not consensual. It's not consensual. I didn't get yet. chipped consensually. Yes. It's There's actually, I've seen episodes of things about that. It's giving uh, alien abduction. Yeah. We, we chipped you. But we, I think like, as far as safety is concerned for your children, like maybe until they're like 18. And I then they get the them. chip removed. Yeah. And then they can, everybody has a chip removing ceremony. Bat mitzvah. And then yeah. instead of a, your chip comes out. Your chip comes out while you're reading the Torah, and then awesome. you become a woman, or a man, or a man. Yeah, depending on depending on what yeah. you are. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and then did you know that? What do you do with the chip? It's a bar or bat mitzvah, depending on if you're a girl or a boy. Yeah, I knew that. You did? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I knew that. 
I was just trying to teach you what something I, new. No, You're yeah. already ahead of the I game. Have, I have three tangents we could go on, so pick what you want. Okay, give me the options. Bugs. <laughs> in general. Okay. Um, tracking in general. or We already did tracking. No, no, no. I could go on because you know what I got? What? Myself for my birthday. What? Air tags. I'm obsessed with my okay, air tags. Okay, yeah, those sometimes, are cool. Sometimes. Do you have one? No, just my wallet and my keys. Needs one. But I've been on time to everything recently because I have an air tag in my wallet and my keys, and I figured out I got to the bottom of it. I'm late because I put down my wallet and my keys somewhere in my room on my way out, and then I'll go back in to get my wallet or my keys and I'll put the other one down. Today I found my keys on top of my car. You know what's cool? Why were they ever on there? I don't know. I was using them to get in. But Connor, you just reminded me I lost my air tag that was in my wallet, but now I'm like I can just find the air tag. You can track the air tag. Let me see where it is. The beauty of the air tag is that that's what you're tracking. It's at my house. Wow. I'll never find it though. It but plays it plays a sound. It plays the saw. It's. Beep. I'm not gonna be able to hear it's, that. It does. Beep. It's like this. Beep. Like, what's the point? It's like for woodland fairies. Like you're putting on a show for yeah. woodland small yeah. p- pixie it's dust useless. characters, especially in a book. with these ears. Because I've told you that my ears, your ears go. You can hear less frequencies as you age. And that's what's happening to me. So I can barely hear my, my air tag. Damn. They Scream to- for me. <laughs> 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 Let me hear you say my name. Let's go. <laughs> Are you okay? Air tag. Let me hear you roar. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have like a house full of a bunch of air tags <laughs> and it's going to be your Edgar Allan Poe sound of a yeah. beating heart. There vibes. should be settings on like the volume of, Turn the, it up. of the tag. Connect to my Bluetooth. Turn, turn this shit up. Can I get air, yeah. can I get ox? I need to find my, <laughs> yeah. my air tag. Yeah. Brooke, this, this show, I don't know if you heard, is sponsored by BetterHelp. I, oh, I've heard. There's so many times where I'm up at night, thoughts racing, can't control my mind, and it's prevented me from going about my day-to-day activities, my life in general. You know, do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly won't stop talking every night, maybe even you could say that. Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at other inopportune moments? I know whenever I have something important or stressful going on the next day, my mind just starts running a million miles an hour and it's almost impossible to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. It turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace i'm all about peace get in line sister yeah therapy has been an incredibly positive experience for me because it offers me a safe space that has helped me gain self-awareness and understand the root cause of my challenges if there are two things that matter it's self-awareness and root causes i've always said that through therapy i've learned positive coping mechanisms that have been both transformative and empowering big big words if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash B-A-N-D-C today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash B-A-N-D-C. Um, anyways, I got two of those for okay. my birthday. Good One's tangent. in my wallet. Yeah, great tangent. Okay, what's the next one? I would air tag genuinely my car, too. I would leave one in my car, which is funny because I heard, like, looking up air tags, I heard recently that, like, a lot, a lot of, like, crazy ex-boyfriend girlfriends will, air tag. will put, put an air tag in yeah. your gas tank yeah. or something, and then, like, they know where you are all also, the time. Also, like, random people, like, in terms of, like, crime vibes. All the time. All the time. I guess I get this a, is where it becomes blurry. Lines, blurred lines, yeah. Robin Dick. Yeah. Yeah, I... I don't know, but I get notifications all the time. This air tag is following you. It's like, (laughs) yeah, it is scary. Patting myself. Did I get chipped when I was like subconscious? Probably. Subconscious. It's probably in your in your car. No, it's on my person because I'll be like solo walking through the mall, and someone's tracking me. So someone slipped one in your purse. Someone slipped me a tag. Hmm. Yeah. Scary. Anyways, you want bugs or bat mitzvah next? Um, we can do about mitzvah, but then I obviously want to check in about like our New York trips and yeah. what we've been through since the last time we saw each other. Yeah. But do you want to do about mitzvahs first? Yeah. Okay. 
I didn't know bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs had themes. Mm-hmm. You, te- you said so. You've never been to one. No, I don't. I guess like where I grew up was very much like like copy and paste people, but like we, I never got invited to one. I would have killed. Wow, damn! I wish we could go back in time, and you could come to mine. You and I both. Yeah, I had mine was the first of my whole grade. Oh, okay. Because and this is also why I didn't have a theme, because. When I was in middle school, my mom decided that she was going to be religious. I didn't take part in that, but she'd kind of went on a solo venture there. And like in religious Judaism, you have your bat mitzvah if you're a girl when you're 12. Oh. And not 13. So I did mine, even though I'm the youngest in the grade, I had mine first because I did it when I was 12. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Okay. Because everyone else was 13 when I was 12 because I'm young, but mine was still first because I did it when I was 12 as opposed to 13 when everyone but else But they would have already done it because they were 13, right? I guess I'm not that much younger than everyone. Okay, imagine I'm the same age as everyone. And you're just kidding. Okay, that's fine. And I get it now. Yeah. Okay, so I had mine first. Yeah. And because she was doing this whole religious thing, I also wasn't allowed to have a theme. So because the theme she was, was like, the, the theme would take away. From, from like the Judaism. religious experience of it all, which I couldn't have given less of a crap about personally, but she didn't have a theme. And then she gave up on the religious thing pretty quickly. And so my sister's theme was YouTube. And I felt completely sick to my stomach at her bat mitzvah because I didn't get a theme. YouTube themed. Yeah, hers was YouTube themed and I didn't get a theme because I had to be religious. The good thing about being religious though is I didn't have to read any Hebrew. Nice. Because that's also apparently a religious thing is the girls don't have to do that. Whereas my sister did because she she did. Because she had the thing. She had a regular. Well, it's a give and take. Set. Yeah. I wanted a theme. Why is men bar and women bar? I don't know. No? I think that's just like words in the. He- oh, like like in like, Spanish. It's yeah, like exactly. Nina, Nino. Exactly. Nino. I think that's the kind of thing. OK, cool. Yeah. I mean, that answers that. My theme for my 13th birthday was slime. Okay. Just in general. F- I would have loved to have a slime theme bat mitzvah. Yeah, it was so fun. There was slime everywhere. Oh, also, can I show you the difference between me and my sister's outfits? Sure. At our... um. Yeah, I would love to see that. Bar mitzvah, just so you get a sense of like what we were both working with in terms of what my mom let us do. Can you talk while I find those photos? Yeah, I'll talk about it. So at my slime-themed birthday party, we had a pool full of slime, like a children's swimming pool, and we did... We got slime. Keep going, actually. Cause let me get oh, both photos. I'm up just like me. having an allergy attack. I really want to talk about bugs when you get a chance. No, do bugs while I while I cue these up. Oh, I really want you to contribute to to the bug um, thing. Okay, so when I was oh, I, it's it's about New York. So maybe I'll just move right toward, towards New York. I got stung by a bug I've never seen in my life. Couple, two weeks ago, I was that's always scary. I was drunk as hell, and I was ho- I got home and I brushed my teeth and I'm like. Sitting down to pee, which I needed to at that time because I was a- unable to aim correctly. And so I sat down and all of a sudden I felt someone stab me in the bottom of my foot with a knife, a dagger. And I lift my foot and there is a pulsing large bug crawling away. And I ran into my friend's room. This is in New York. Connor, I would have freaked. No, I was about to. There's nothing you do either. I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Jake, wake up. Sorry, not you. I got stung by a bee or something. And like, I was like, it was like 2.30 a.m. And it's like pitch black. And I'm like, he's like, where is it? Where is he? He's like grabbing my foot. He's like shining the light. He's like, I don't see a stinger. I'm like, I don't see a stinger. My foot just starts to swell up. My foot was swollen for two and a half weeks. Like swollen and itchy, which sucks to be on the bottom of your Did foot. Did you like, are you sure it wasn't like poison? You nope. might have needed to be sucked. Like this. The I was venom. telling him to suck. Do whatever you need yeah. to. Wink, wink. Yeah. Suck the bottom of my yeah. foot, Jake. You could have sucked your own foot. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not that flexible. Let me see. If you tried harder, you could Brooke, have I couldn't have foot. done it. Maybe maybe in my um like what happens when like a mom has to lift a car after a kid. Right. What's that adrenaline phenomenon rush? called? Yeah. Adrenaline rush. Maybe in my adrenaline rush I could be a trapeze artist and suck the bottom of my foot. At that time, I couldn't. I, okay. Actually, that if didn't... it came down to it and I was bit by that poisonous bug on my foot, would you suck the venom out See, of my like, foot? See, like, now I'm thinking about it, it's like, would you 
Would you want to have that poison that's in your foot in your mouth? But you spit it out and use mouthwash. I I guess I, I'm glad it happened to me on this trip because I don't think anyone else could have dealt with what. I, Brooke, it's still. I'm gonna just show you the bottom. Oh wait, foot. I thought you said you got stung by a bee. I thought it was a bee, but like the more I thought about it, the more I was like. That, I don't know why I just touched that your foot. That pulsing, <laughs> that pulsing gray. Like I don't even know how to explain it. And then my friends were all like looking up bugs on Long Island that night in the woods, and it was the worst experience. Like to look up which poisonous bug stung you, and they are all from hell. It was like, oh, I can't do this. I'd rather just like lose my foot mm -hmm. and not even know what but stung me. What would me. scare me if, is if it's the venom is going up into the rest of my body. It did. It's it swelled up onto my ankle, which is crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, y'all. And then I've been having nightmares about bugs ever since. Oh, Connor, I'm sorry. And it's like spider season in California. Have you noticed that? Mm. Maybe it is right. No, and I wish you didn't. Okay, because okay, I thought I made that up. But like, I'm having dreams about spiders. I think because it's so hot out, the spiders like come in your house or like try to get in your house because it's like AC or something. So we've had like a couple spiders in like our downstairs and I'm just like uncomfortable. I want to live in an insane asylum with all white walls. Yeah. I can see everywhere in the room at all times because like not knowing there's a spider in your room is worse than n knowing there's a spider right there. I can see it. That's a good way to put it. At least I know it's there. At least I know it's there. Mm -hmm. Ugh, but I keep having I keep having these dreams, and then yesterday, I was walking him, and I looked down at this tattoo, and I'm in my peripheral. I'm like, oh, it's just my tattoo. It's my like black ink tattoo. Right. Big old spider crawling on my leg. Oh. I'm just like living in hell. I can't wait for that. The best. You know what? Don't care about any other holidays. The best day of the year is when it gets cold as shit randomly one day and all the bugs where just do they die. go they die they, they die they die how do they come back to how if they all die then how are they reborn unfortunately i don't want to say this word but eggs oh i'm going to freak out <laughs> and they hatch oh that's horrible yeah wow whoa that's bad no i want to i, I want to live in a fumigation tent i don't care what i'm it moving in me. with you yeah Mm -mm -mm. I hate bugs. Yeah, there's no redeeming qualities, and when, they do when, some good things for soil. When God calls all creation right? to sing, do you think spiders will be in the choir? I do. I hope not. Were they on Noah's Ark? There's probably so many f spiders on Noah's Ark. Let me Google what bugs what a, were on. What a foul boat! Hold on. That probably was. What I bet it smelled bugs like shit. Were on spiders Noah's everywhere? Mosquitoes, Ark. ticks. What insects were on the ark? Oh. Okay, I'm on answers at Genesis. Oh, and so are we. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, bees, bats, a, they're not bugs. No, bats aren't bugs. They're at just all. flyers. They're mammals. Aquatic. Actually. You know flying. what? I can deal with ants. I can deal with bees. Okay, flying creatures, but that's probably bats and birds. Okay, there are a lot of arguments against insects being taken on the ark. All the animals taken into the ark are described as flesh. Very cool. Okay. Flesh like mammal? This flesh. Uh-uh. I'm not doing I'm not doing this right no, now. No, don't don't dive don't dive into genesis.org. We see later in the flood account that all forms of life outside the ark that breathe through their nostrils perished. Insects and arachnids. Ugh. Do not break through the not breathe through the nostrils. So we're not. Do considered, they have nostrils? We're not considered nepesh chehe, <laughs> living creatures that needed to be saved as obligate passengers on the ark. Okay, so how'd they get here? So explain that. I can't. Well, I'll, someone, I'll, I'll there must have been some eggs on someone. Or on one of the flesh. Oh, now I feel like they're all over me. Anytime I anytime I see a spider. 72 hours, it's still on me in my head. I haven't seen a spider in so long, but I have a feeling I'm about to. Oh, don't say that. Well, you gave me no choice. You manifested. Anytime someone's like, I'm, I'm so alone, there's probably a spider two feet away from you somewhere. Okay, let's move on just due to me feeling I'm sick. itchy everywhere yeah. on my body now. Yeah. Are you also itchy? Yeah, and you know what? I feel bad for the people listening because I bet they're itching and, and squirming. Every time we do an episode, I'm like, something we say is going to make someone get in a car wreck. Uh-huh. Didn't someone already? Yes. 
Okay. Let's, they did. I'm Thanks not, for writing I'm not in, gonna by the way. not going to manifest that. No. For, no one no. is ever going to get in another okay. car wreck. Hey, guys. We want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Quince. Even though my closet was overflowing with clothes, I feel like I never have anything to wear. That is so true. Then I found Quince and have finally given my closet the upgrade we both desperately need. I've built out a capsule wardrobe with iconic pieces that can be styled for any occasion. Quince creates timeless classics that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever, which makes putting them, putting together that outfit way easier. Quince has all the capsule wardrobe must-haves, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50, suede and leather jackets, and silk blouses and dresses. With fall right around the corner, which is scary to say, I've been really excited to whip out my Quince cashmere sweater. It's on top of my closet. Gorgeous. I got it dry cleaned because I was, you know, I'm, I'm new to cashmere, I have to say. I know. The best part is that not only is Quince super soft and stylish, it also comes at a very affordable price with luxury brand quality that doesn't break the bank. I could sleep in, your in, my, ca- in my Quince from the, the cashmere sweater. Yeah, you've told me that. I know. Well, here's the kicker, Connor. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings to us. I'd hate to be the middleman. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. I love that too. Take the drama out of planning an outfit and upgrade your closet with Quince today. Go to quince.com slash B and C for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash B-A-N-D-C and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash B and C. I'm going to head back to the bat mitzvah tangent really quick okay. just because I feel like I'm still actually back. holding on to a lot of resentment from my childhood. But this is what I had to wear to my bat mitzvah. Yeah. Okay. And granted, I did look different at my sister at this time due to like puberty completely doing something to me that I've never seen it do to someone else, which is cool. Yeah. But um, this was me at my bat mitzvah in this in this two piece suit. Okay. <laughs> and I had no choice but to wear the two piece suit. Okay. Wait, I want to see it. Mm-hmm. It's not funny. I like. <laughs> no, it, I promise you, it is. This smile too is is pretty funny in the two piece suit. This one. I also love hands in complete fists. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> with a hair tie. Now here's my sister at her bat mitzvah. Like I'm actually like not healed but from this. Okay, we're doing complete ball gown. Okay. Let me see. Stunning. Do you see why, like, why I'm holding on to this like anger and resentment? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Because I'll tell you. My mom completely changed her personality. I'll tell you how it happens. Because from the first child to the third or last child, something shifts, and it's called I don't really give a shit anymore. It wasn't even that. It was just like, oh, I'm religious for the months that are Brooks bat mitzvah, and then I'm I completely changed my mind. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. It's just like all. It's just like timing never was on my side. In in a, in like a similar way, I was always grounded for things, and by the time my sister was the age that I was getting grounded for those things, my parents did not care. So mm-hmm. I feel like it might be related in that sense as well. But again, I, I don't, I didn't have a bat mitzvah, right? So, so I don't just know. Like so many politics that go into it, mm-hmm. you know. I don't think I've ever had a themed anything. I always used to love my cakes; they were so delicate and. Uh, intricate is what I meant, not delicate. They had like, because our neighbor was a cake maker. Oh my God. And she would do a full scene. So we had Sandy. We had like, and I remember I always wanted the sand piece. I guess one of my other, be- one of my other themes was beach. Oh, beach. Ken birthday. That makes sense yeah. for you. But the, the sand on the cake, the edible sand was really good. My birthday cake every single year was, oh. what? Did he fart? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's a mosquito biting me. <laughs> like we manifested that. It's been flying around. When I said I was itchy, at least I'm there wearing, it is. Do you see I'm it? wearing pants. Brooke. No, I don't. It's right. It landed underneath the table. I'm not even gonna look at it. it. I'm not giving it. No, if you give it the, you're giving it the power. I'm not giving it the power. I'm not even acknowledging it. Well, it didn't bite your ankle three times because I'm wearing today. pants. Your I ankles. The, are I had tr- the foresight. Oh, you do have knew. the foresight. What was I saying? Cake. cake. Oh, my cake every year. Yeah. Have you ever had a turtle pie from Baskin Robbins? Like, 
the most underrated dessert in the entire world. I don't think they still make them. It's a layer of like cookie crumble crust because it's like a pie. So it's oh, like more of like an Oreo crust, I guess. Yeah. Then it's ice cream and then it's like pecans Damn. and then it's the like caramel that's and the then it's ran- like hot fudge. That's what you did for your birthday cake? Every year. That's like it, the most it's, random. It's unbeatable. A bathroom oh, rock and syrup pie. I got to try it. Yeah, I don't know if they still make them though. So, I wouldn't even know how to find a Baskin Robbins. Are they still in business? I don't know. I'll, can we look that up? Speaking of cake, though. Dot 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 dot. Oh, oh! I was like, am I supposed to know what to say? <laughs> I was like, speaking of cake, and you were quiet, and I was like, oh, yes. Speaking of cake, speaking we of cake. Oh, I see. Someone just had a birthday. Oh. Thank you. Yay. Oh, oh, you guys. Oh, and for those audio listeners, there's a cake there's for a our cake food that just arrived. Oh, my God. Connor, you read guys. what it says. Never forget. Happy birthday, Fibs. Oh, That's so good. And we won't ever forget. That's so good. Oh Should you gosh. want us to sing to you? No. I can. Um. Okay. Do it in Hebrew. I can do that. Okay. Yom Aled Ed Samea. That I'll, I'll leave fine. it at that. That's good. I'll blow out. Make a wish though. And then tell us what you wish for. He's still thinking. Go ahead, make a wish for us now. <laughs> oh, okay, Connor. What'd you wish for? I can't tell you. It won't come true. In this space, it will. I, subs- say it I subscribe to the notion that birthday wishes are for oneself. Oh. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You're interesting because like, I don't know what you wish for, whereas you would probably be able to guess what I wish for right away. What would you wish for if it was your birthday today? I can't say. You can because it's not. No, I can't say. It's not the case. Well, I probably wish for it this past birthday. Oh, then yeah. But that's, I, that's a good call. You know? Mm-hmm. You want to eat it? Um, I'm yeah. I'm scared for him to wake up and realize okay. that we're eating. Well, maybe when we go to bonus. Yeah, when we go to bonus. I want everyone to see the cake though. Without dropping it, this looks like a really good cake. Ooh. It does. Ooh, and it's dense. I love. Sorry, I'm gonna. It's a dense, moist cake. Do you like a dense, moist or an airy, fluffy? Dense, moist. Me too. That's. It's amazing. It's so Audio pretty. only. I'm holding it towards the camera. Just watch on YouTube already. Yeah. <laughs> And go subscribe while you're at it. And sub subscribe, please. Ooh, how was that? That's good frosting, too. Thank you, guys. Happy birthday, King. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, so. I want to, before we even move on from my birthday, okay. I just want to tell you about my birthday goals. Mm-hmm. They're very simple goals. I set really attainable goals this year That's so good. that I wouldn't be like, learn a new language. It was put your clothes away when you stay in a hotel more than two nights and watch all of Sopranos. Sopranos? Sopranos. That's a good goal. Thanks. I haven't started that one yet. But. I don't see you liking it. I just feel like I'm missing out on a lot of relevant Uh conversation because I've never seen it. Okay. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know who's in it. Mafia. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Or mob. What's the difference between the mob and the mafia? Oh, I don't know. Is there a difference? I don't know. Mafia seems Italian, but so does mob. Yeah, I don't know. they both do. I guess let's chalk it up to DSDF. Oh, sorry. Ooh. <laughs> let's chalk it up to think? the Italians. Chalk it up to Olive Garden. Okay, sure. Chalk it up to unlimited breadsticks. Should we look it up though, just so that we can provide a learning moment so. for the audience? I think so. That's what our podcast is all about. The American Mafia, commonly referred to in North America as the Italian American Mafia, or the Mafia, or the Mob, <laughs> it's the same. Oh. Mob equals large crowd of people, especially uh, one that is disorderly. Wait. Mafia equals a type of organized. Crime. But does the mob have to be Italian? Is I that think, the difference? No, I think that they were both Italian. Because are there a- any non-Italian mafias or mobs? Ooh, what are they? What are they? Russian. Ooh, the Russian mafia. Right. Okay. Irish. Irish. 
Uh, they don't seem that dangerous. They're probably like. Drunk oh my all the god. Time. Ooh. Oh, I wouldn't say. <laughs> I don't. Um, I can. I think we. Can there's a them. Jewish mafia. What are they like? <laughs> can we look up the Jewish mafia? The kosher mob. The kosher mob. And the kosher. Oh mafia. my god! This whole time I had no idea. Wow. Who was? Okay. I bet, like, Jewish American organized crime initially emerged within the American Jewish community. That makes sense. During the late 19th and 20th centuries. Okay. What did they do? Oh my God. Look, Brooke, you check this about, out. Like, what they did. Check this out. The, f um, oh wait, the last, blah, blah, blah. The former, blah, blah. I love, the I love all the names of people in mafias. Bugsy. Oh my God. Get this. Monk Eastman who yeah. himself was most likely not Jewish, despite being in the Jewish mafia, operated a powerful Jewish gang that competed with the Italian and Irish gangs for control of New York City's underworld. Where's the underworld? See, like, it's just underneath the, the world. I yeah. saw someone cut out, come out of a sewer dead New fucking York? seriously when I was in New York. Like, literally came out and just, like, went to work. Yeah, I think it's pretty much operating as normal That's under, under there. It's it's an it's a society. There's a society underneath the ground. Oh my god, the largely Jewish American and Italian American gang, so combo platter gang, which was known as Murder Inc. Oh okay, my god, not very subtle. <laughs> hey, what do you guys? I will say they always say Jews and Italians are cut from the same cloth. Yeah, yeah. So maybe this is kind of where it goes back to Murder Inc. Incorporated LLC. Yeah. They loved they loved murdering. Damn. Wow. Kosher mob. I like the sound of that. That'd be a great deli. It would. Kosher mob. It would. Awesome. Free idea. Today's episode is sponsored by Acorns. Acorns helps you and your kids save and invest. The best part, there's no expertise required. Investments are automatically put into diversified portfolios based on your risk tolerance. Acorns has exclusive <laughs> financial education content for your whole family. Do I understand that investing for my future is important? Yes. Do I have the time to sit down and figure out how to do that? Well, mm. I, it actually turns out that I do because I use Acorns. <laughs> Acorns takes only a few minutes to set up and it allows me to automatically contribute on a regular basis to a portfolio that is already diversified for me based on my risk tolerance. It's genius. Pat on the back for me. True. And for Acorns, they get some credit <clears throat> here too. The sooner you start investing, the more chance your money has to grow over time. From Acorns, Mighty Oaks do grow. Yes. Head to acorns.com slash BNC to download Acorns to start saving and investing for your future today. This is a paid testimonial and may not be representative of all clients. Compensation provides an incentive to positively promote Acorns. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash BNC. Investment advisory services offered by Acorns Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Brokerage services provided by Acorn Securities, LLC, an SEC Registered Broker Dealer and member of FINRA SIPC. For more information, visit acorns.com. Nothing like going back home into New York to realize, to make you realize there are no good delis here in Los Angeles. Uh, I beg to differ. No, I'm telling you. I mean, I don't know if you saw that sandwich I got at FICO's in the West Village in New York. I just said here, there's no good delis here in Los Angeles. I'm just That's bringing, in New York, which yeah. I just said is where the good delis are. I just don't, have you looked for a good deli here? Yes, Connor. Uh, Yeah. Have I looked for a good deli? Yeah, I have. Okay. And they're fine. Yeah. They're not New York slash Philly delis. There's there's like a little Jewish area of L.A. I know. Just go like walk through it and see. I don't really want to. The, well, there's probably a really good deli there. I don't think like that seems like a religious area and the like good delis are like not really like religious, but more like cultural. Maybe you'll get an answer. Sound off in the comments if you live in LA and there's a really good deli that yeah. Brooke hasn't heard okay. of. Okay, so true. But like not, what's that one that because we went we to? Because li we live... Or I live near like Cantor's, which is the most famous one. It's not good. No offense. And then there's another one near me that's better. Daughter's Deli. But it's like not. It's not New York. It's not New York. And it's not. Just joke. It's not Northeast. You got a hair in my You okay? <laughs> no. Here, yes. have some of your Harry Potter water. Oh my God, it's empty. Let me refill you. Thank you. Fill up my cup. Another glass. Drank. Mazel tov. That is like an that awesome song.
<laughs> crazy that that's real. It is. Oh my God, I would have killed to see you tearing up the dance floor to that song at Bat Mitzvahs. Because that was, that was our era. What song is that? I got a feeling. feeling. Wow. Yeah. You know, I couldn't play that unless, and I would used to knock on wood when that would play and I couldn't change a song because I was so OCD that I was like, I can't like let this be a bad night. If you have a feeling it's going to be a good night, Black Eyed Peas. I think you've said this before. I'm going to knock on wood because I like can't risk it. Yeah. Because what if it's a bad night? Right. All because of totally. me. Totally. Um, shoot. Okay. So my goals. Okay. Oh. Uh, one was to watch Hotel. The Sopranos, which Sopranos, Kosher Mob okay. sounds awesome. Um, Murdering. I haven't started that. Second was to put up my clothes when I travel and I stay somewhere for more than two days. Okay. Put my clothes away, yeah. so I'm not like living out of my suitcase. Life hack. Life hack. Put your clothes away when you travel, so that you can like put stuff down. So I did that when we went to the Hamptons. When I left the Hamptons, I was like, "Wow, I packed so much better <laughs> on my way out than when I got here." You I zipped all your up. Clothes. I'm usually. Thank you for burying the lead. <laughs> I usually not what that means. I usually <laughs> have to wrestle my suitcase down like Steve Irwin. <gasps> hold that thought <laughs> and like zip it, and it's gonna bust. And I'm thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to DM away and be like, I don't know what happened to my suitcase. It just shattered. And not this time. I was leaving, and I was like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. Like, I don't know how I packed better. Got home. Half my clothes. We're hanging, half were in the dresser, left everything in the dresser. Mm -hmm. Didn't think to open the drawer on my way out. Were you able to get them back or? Oh, hell no. Okay, hell no. No. So when I got back to New York and was there for another five days, I had to go to shopping each day. Fun excuse to go shopping. I know, but it's like less fun out of necessity. Yeah, totally. And like, totally. And like Cause then recycling. Because you can never find anything. Yeah. And being like, it was also 117 degrees the whole week. Yeah. Can I circle back to Steve Irwin? Mm-hmm. I wrote this on our notes app this week. I just wrote yeah. Steve Irwin because can you just believe it? No, I can't. Like, I can't believe that he existed and then died in that way. And then we're just going about our day to day lives, not honoring him Where with everything are... we do. What do you do every day to honor Steve Irwin? I say crikey every single day. Do you? Yeah. I've never heard to you say somebody. it. somebody. Never heard you say it in three years. Some like I'll, I said it this morning when I got my coffee. Okay, I'll it was so hot. I said, "Crikey, it. you should not make this coffee so hot, y'all." I just like can't believe it. I know I can't believe we I have so many conspiracy it. theorists out in the world, and no one's talking about how a stingray to the heart. Steve Irwin got stabbed by a stingray. That's convenient. You know the worst part because I was obviously Wikipedia diving yeah. for maybe sixteen hours. He literally was talking after it happened. He was no, he would have been fine. In the same way when you run over a nail in your car tire. Oh, he took it out. You don't want to take it out the nail out yeah. of the tire because it will deflate. You leave it in and call, I don't know, call someone. But him, he took it out and he bled out. But he should have left it in, I think. I don't know. You can't live with a stingray stinger in your heart, well, I'm was sure. It, but... Was it venomous? Bring up the... Bring up the da- bring out the dancing lobster. Bring out the dancing lobster. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a deep dive live. Stingrays contain venom and spines looking in the back of their tail. Can we look up specifically the stingray that stung Steve Irwin in the in the heart? Did they kill it? I hope so. To be honest, yeah. I although is it his fault? Yeah. It's well, I fault. guess technically Steve was in his home in Stingray's home or her. Are Stingrays girls? Can they be? I don't know. Okay. We're Steve Irwin was fatally injured by a short-tailed stingray. Oh, a dysitis burfavicudia. On September 4, 2006, while filming a documentary in the Great Barrier Reef, a month after a tragic event. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. A month after the tragic event in October 2006, 10 stingrays were found dead and mutilated on Queensland beaches, fueling speculation and mystery. I mean- Why is no one talking about I, that? I just want to say, 10 seems like not that many- do you think they were m- murdered in revenge? Mutil- like yes, one hundred percent. Think, think about vigil- what happened. Vigilante? Think about what would happen if, like, I don't know, a labradoodle attacked and killed. Sorry, bad example. Harry Styles. A, a pigeon attacked and killed Harry Styles. That's then, what I was going to say. Then they'd there'd all be, be dead. There'd be dead pigeons ever askew. There'd be dead everywhere you step. There would be a dead Oof, pigeon. There's pigeons everywhere. But aren't stingrays a little bit more endangered than pigeons? Like pigeons, it's like, okay. I don't know, are shorts there ting Probably. 
Okay. Are they going to be okay? Yeah, th- it sounds like Decidus Baravacudate are endangered, if I've ever heard of it. Oh, look who can suddenly pronounce the hardest word in the ever. Connor, I did not pronounce that right. Baravacude. Yeah, that seems... Oh, I didn't know you knew how to pronounce it. I do because you said it. Okay. Oh, I mean, that looks like a dangerous beast. I probably wouldn't have gotten oh, that close massive. to that. Oh, that's massive. That's uh, not a stingray. No, that's a short-tailed Is stingray. It... Can you Google if they can be girls? Brooke, of course. I mean... Yeah. Or is it like, are they agendered? Or sexed? Can, yes. Be girls. <laughs> During the mating, the male and the st- female. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Damn. Are stingrays friendly to humans? No. Wow, someone born in 2000. They're not aggressive. Research that. I d- okay, c- can we look up more specifically what happened to Steve? I don't think they're poisonous. I think it was a barb. You think it was a... I think it was a barb and it punctured his heart and then he bled out. Because he took it out? Yeah, because he took it out. I think he bled out. Wow, there's so much mystery. Okay. Oh my God, that is so scary that it was on Irwin's video. death is the only fatality from a stingray captured on video. I know. Convenient. Although it has not been released to the public and is one of the few human deaths from stingrays. Okay, while swimming in the water, he approached the, sim- the stingray. He initially believed he had only punctured, oh, and then it punctured. He initially believed he had only punctured a lung. However, the stingray's bar pierced his heart, causing him to bleed to death. I don't think he took it out, did he? Because, oh, it's so scary and sad. Yeah. It's just like, I don't even remember that happening. You think you would remember. I do. Like, that's like as prominent to me as 9-11. Like, I would I'm think. Being serious. I would think I remembered that but i look at everybody they're in shambles yeah he was like a president to the australians too i think yeah i don't know but yeah shock and distress i'd say so we don't have someone that we don't have an bear grills like if oh i guess he's not american but if bear grills died i'd be like who's that yeah he just ate a bat raw of course he died yeah he's scaling a waterfall of course he died see if erwin nah no he He's, and he really spoke to the animals in a way that no one else has. I was saying earlier that this is the dog that's going to end up talking to me. Oh, you think? Yeah. What makes you say? There's some. There's a person inside his body. I saw it in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Human eyes. Ocean eyes. Oh, sh- real eyes. Real eyes. Real eyes. Yeah. Okay. So today, guys, we've covered so far bugs. <laughs> Air tags, bat mitzvahs, and Steve Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one other thing. Jewish oh, mafia. The Jewish, d- Jewish mafia. <laughs> Murdering. So. The kosher mob. So just like, just so everyone's aware, they're out there and they are delicious. Mm-hmm. Okay. How have you been since I last saw you t- uh, I don't two even, weeks ago? I don't even remember the last time I saw you. Um, the podcast two weeks ago. Yeah, good. I don't think I've done that much. You oh, were I in New York. I was in New York that whole time. Went to the Hamptons. It was super fun. Went back. Tried to do... Th- turns out Fashion Week. I don't really understand what it is. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be here because I was. I went on the morning toast mm-hmm. in New York, which was awesome, on, on that Thursday. So I had to fill up meetings and stuff. Right. I've got the show in New York, November 11th. That's a Chelsea City Music Hall. Sorry, I've been saying the wrong venue on here for two weeks chelsea music hall and tickets are live right now but i'll i'll post about it but um i like had meetings for that and then i had a couple random things but i I was like i'm gonna see if i can get on the list of any of these fashion things i did i got to see the strokes at the j crew That's event really cool that was star studded i was really shocked that i got to get in there but that was awesome um and then went to vogue so Two things I shouldn't have been invited That's, to. Those are two big things. Yeah. And then I went to the US Open mm. of tennis. Now, it is, like I said, 115 degrees. I don't, we talked about this on the, on the morning toast, but like, you know how people in Arizona are like, oh, it's only like 94 degrees there. Like you would die in Arizona. It's like, That's why we don't live in Arizona. Right. Because we would die. And I'm not, I don't have an interest in living in Arizona. No, it's I can't horrible. handle the heat. No offense. So I didn't know how to dress to go to the US Open. I wanted to look kind of classy. How can you look classy when you're also having heat stroke soaking wet. symptoms? And I'm soaking wet. And I sweat so much more than a normal person, I figured out. No, you don't. <laughs> Brooke, yeah, I do. Okay. I'm looking at these people, hot, hot, hot people. Not hot, even like hot or hot? Sexy. <laughs> and they are, don't even have a drop of sweat, it appears. 
I am. I look like I someone <laughs> dumped a bucket of ALS ice bucket challenge on me. I am drenched, Brooke. I start. The more I'm thinking about how hot I am, and then someone tells me that someone had a heat stroke yesterday, the more I convince myself I'm about to have a heat stroke. I found someone that worked at the U.S. Open of Tennis venue, and I said, can you find me some scissors, sir? I went in the bathroom. I cut the legs off my Levi's. Now I'm at the U.S. Open in jean shorts. <laughs> they are frayed across the bottoms. Like It looks like it was just bad. I was like, I thought I was going to have a seizure, so I would like, cut my pants into shorts in the bathroom. And then I didn't know, not know what to do with the legs. Because the towel... Sleeves. I was too hot for sleeves, Brooke. I was wearing a short sleeve shirt. So then I, I'm like, I can't... Because the, the towel return for the napkins in there was not a trash can. It was like, we're going to wash these and like reuse them. So I couldn't put my denim jean legs in there. So I just sneak out into like the open and toss my the pants of my legs into a trash can. <sighs> oh. Well, you looked cute from your photo. Glanks. Um... And now, back to real life. Yeah. Back to reality. Welcome back. Thanks. That's it. I, I mean, that's that's really it. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Green Chef slash Every Plate is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands, and now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with us. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with HelloFresh. HelloFresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard part, and you get to take the credit. And when it comes to options, honestly, more is more. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why HelloFresh's menu includes 40 recipes and over 100 add-on items to choose from every week. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door, actually, in less than seven days. Last week, I tried HelloFresh's Hall of Fame dish, one pot Thai coconut curry turkey soup. And all I can say is compliments to the chef, AKA you, as it was so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I loved how easy it was to throw everything together in a pot because it made the cleanup so much easier and I was out of the kitchen in 30 minutes. HelloFresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door. This fall, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50BNC and use code 50BNC for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50BANDC and use code 50BANDC for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. How about, how about you? How was New York I for you? I had the greatest time. Yeah, it seemed like it. Ever. Yeah. Which is shocking because I, I went with my friend Alexa but when I did all the stuff that I was really excited to do, I did it alone, yeah. which like it's not something that I do. Um, and I had like the best time and it was also just like super rewarding because it's like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. But basically we stayed at a hotel that I paid full price for despite As trying my best efforts. Um, and, you know, the reason I was going was to see the last performance of Funny Girl. Yes. So the day came, and as we were discussing on the podcast a few weeks ago, I was shocked at how cheap my ticket was. Yeah. It was like $200, which is like very cheap compared to the other $600 ones. There's $600. There were like five to 600 the that's other like, ones. That's like Taylor Swift tickets. I mean, it was like the last performance. Okay. Um, some were 400 too, but I was just like, I'll get the 200 one. Like there is nothing, there is literally nothing different about this $200 ticket and the one next to it that is $400. Okay, got the $200 one. No sirens going off for No you. sirens going off. Completely able to purchase it on the website with no additional prompts. Whatever. I get to the venue, the theater venue, and it was M17. So I get to row M. I'm seeing row, I'm seeing C, 16. M15, 16, 
that's the end of the row. I say, okay, no worries. It'll be behind us. We're seeing N1, N2, right. N3. Okay, look in front of us. Okay, what's before M? O. Oh, I'm seeing okay. O1, O2. Wait, L. So I ask um, the usher and I say, where's seat M17, by the way? And he just looks at me and he goes, I'm so sorry. You should not have been allowed to buy that seat. It's not a seat. It's it's an empty for, space that you uh, could roll a wheelchair into. Right. Yeah. But it is not a seat. Um, so there I was standing in the empty crevice of, of M17. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so what do I do, by the way? And he was like, do I'm just going to have a wheelchair on site that I could. I didn't have a wheelchair on my person. No, I think. Yeah, I was like, right. What if so you're I was in crutches like, just standing right. there for the whole show? Right. So I was like, what do I do? And they were like, we're just going to have you stand in this room um, and we're going to figure out like what we can do to accommodate you. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like almost in tears because I'm just like, I I have to see. I have to see the show. Yeah. Like, or unfortunately, I will die. Yeah. Um. So I'm in a room with people who also require additional assistance to access their seats. Um. <laughs> so it was just us for a while. You know, Were they looking at you like this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I I think they were wondering why I was in the room cuz I was standing. <laughs> so, I love it. You should have been so, like, "Oh my god, a miracle." <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Eventually the guy comes back and is like, "Okay, these are the seats we can offer you." Yeah. Since M17 doesn't exist. And by the grace of God, they were it was further back. It was S1, but S1 was actually a better view than M17 because it was like in the aisle, nothing in front of me. Okay. Whereas M17 would have been obstructed by people's heads. Right. So I could see like clear view to the stage. The and nice, by the way. Like how, was, how could that have ever happened? Which was awesome. Yeah. And in that moment, because I had such a clear view, I was also able to see um, my friend Jonathan Groff right. at that time. So. I like was started to break out no sweat. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything like he was being swarmed. And at this point, I had decided to redeem my free cocktail that I had been um, granted due to the troubles that I had gone through the trials and tribulations um, just, you know, to make everything right. So I got my free cocktail and I was sipping on that during all of act one, but I also couldn't help but feel Jonathan's presence. Like I know the whole I, I know time, exactly like completely about. hairs on my arm, all standing up. And he was wearing these gorgeous glasses and he was sitting next to Leah's mom. Good. And I was just like a little bit on edge, but I also was completely locked into act one, which was one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Leah is Connor. She's not, she's AI. It felt like there was an iPod in her throat and the music was coming out of the iPod that was located was in, really, in her throat wow. because it didn't sound like a human could make those no, those noises and hit those notes. It sounded like a computer generated mm -hmm. sound. So after the act one, I, I had ingested all of my cocktail yeah. and I was actually feeling like a little bit brave yeah. because of my vodka soda with a spritz of lime. Liquid courage. Yeah. Liquid courage. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. So there was a line like fully like throughout the entire aisle like and back towards like the concession stand and he was like in the front of the theater. So there was like maybe Wait, like, there was a, line a mile to, to, meet, to meet him. him? Okay. Because it's kind of like at your comedy show when people were also like, hi, Brooke. Yeah. It was like that yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Like yeah. you, if you go to a that makes show sense. with Leah and it, you're you going to freak that out about before you went. You were like, he's going to yeah, be there. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um. So I had gotten myself in line and at this point I'm like, talking to everyone like out of nerves and shaking as well. And I got so lucky that a lot of people there were familiar with the pod. Oh, good. So they were able to let oh, me go. Good. They let me go in front of them, oh, which was, good. which was really sweet. Wow. That's Cause I awesome. think they knew yeah. that it was like probably the most important day of my life. Yeah. And I want to, and I want to thank them all. Yeah. They were so sweet. And then this older gentleman, I'm getting closer and closer to Jonathan. I yeah. can see him and his gorgeous glasses and his curls were just perfectly done. And, this old gentleman was like watching me panic and he was like, you know what, honey, we're going to get you closer to the front. We're going to say you're family. And he's like walking me to the front. He's like, she's family. She's family. And then I look at him and I was like, do you know Jonathan? No, he didn't. He was just letting everyone know out of the goodness of his heart. And I was like, you know what? I'm fine. I'm going to take it from here because he was actually starting to make, make me a little nervous. Um, yeah. But thanks to him as well for for that. So, Life hack. 
life life hack. Say your family. Life hack. By this random gentleman. Crazy yes. man to. He was leading me. He was land. leading me through. Well, how many people did you skip to get closer? Mm, maybe like 150. <laughs> I had to. I, your hands. Were tied. I literally did. I like had so many. Your tubes were tied at that, so many at that moment. Services at my disposal. I had that man. I had these nice fans, and then finally, I'm so close to him. I can literally smell him. And then Leah's mom comes and is like, like at, right at me. Is like, I'm so sorry, you guys. Like, I'm gonna have to cut this off because the poor guy was like completely being exhausted, exhausted. And I looked at Leah's mom and I was like, you know what? Like, it's fine. Like, I'm too nervous anyway. And she goes, No, you're meeting him. Leah's mom said Leah's that to mom. you? Leah's mom was like, not like, everyone needs to go, but not you, you stay. And I'd like to think she saw a little bit of her daughter in me. <laughs> no, she probably saw identical her daughter in you. Like, I really, like, she really seemed to, there's, like, was some sort of connection between me and- Maybe she's a and, listener. And Mrs. Michelle. No, she wasn't. Oh. Um, I, you could just tell, but like, I just, there was a connection between me and her. Yeah. And she kind of just like stood next to me as I went ahead and- and introduced myself and here are the things that I said. Well, as a previously disabled woman yeah. earlier in the night, that was really <laughs> that was I really had, nice of her I to do that. I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one aids throughout, yeah. <laughs> throughout this experience. I had the old man, I had her. Okay, I wrote down immediately once I got back to my seat, <clears throat> my seat yeah. things I said to John. Good for you for keeping a list, I love lists. Yeah. Okay, got up to him, I said, sorry, you must be completely drained. He said, I'm okay. And then I said, I just have to tell you, stared at him in complete silence mm. for about, it was probably like 10 seconds, but it feels like forever. 10 seconds is forever. 10 seconds is forever when you you say, I just have to tell you and then start staring at someone not saying anything. I'd be scared. Then I said, I love the Spring Awakening soundtrack. He said, thanks. He's so sweet though. He's so, being so sweet. Yeah. And then every time he said thanks, I was just like, oh, let me say something else. Whereas in reality, I should have just went on my way. Okay. Then I said, I would not be here today. Yeah. Okay. okay. Without your cover of Bohemian Rhapsody. That would have been enough. Just that. Just that would have been he good. He said, thank you. Yeah. And I said, also your cover of Lionel Richie's Hello. Yeah. And he said, thank you. And then I said, do you mind if I take a picture with you? Which is, yeah. And then he said, that's fine. And then I took about 16 completely blurry ones. And I said, sorry, those blurred out. I'll just take some more. <laughs> and he said, that's fine. And then I don't really remember anything he said or anything about him. I just remember that he is so sweet and the love of my life. And, uh, and just like, I, good picture. I could not have been happier in that moment. And then I went back to my seat and sat in complete silence for the 15 minute intermission yeah. and didn't barely move. No one is talking about his tasteful stubble. No one's talking about, that's my friend, Natalie. Um, no one's talking about his tasteful stubble. The glasses are incredible. Love his hair. It's perfect length. And I just adore him good, and Leah's mom. Hairline, and I just hairline. had the really the best experience at Funny Girl. And I'd like to thank everyone at the theater for accommodating me in seat S1 and for the free cocktail. I also could have gotten a free shirt, but the usher wanted to take me to get a free shirt during this moment. And I had other plans to meet Jonathan. I think that this so was, I didn't get the free show. This was well worth your time. But yeah, it was also the best show I've ever seen and she is like a force. And not to make this about me, but top yeah. comment much? Would you say? 1200 likes on my comment? Well, yeah. Manifestation space much? It was. It That's was. What it was. I, well, not I mean he was Brooke, If you know anything, you know he's going to be there. From you know No, anything no, about no, space. no, from start to finish. Seat that didn't seat wasn't there. You move to the aisle. You have a direct line sight from him. People that listen to the podcast there that allowed you to skip. Crazy old man, which is probably God. I think he was. <laughs> he literally was Mr. Bean from what all those movies. I Mr. literally Bean can't think of who else that would have been besides God. And then you're there. And then Lee, Lee Michelle's mom, who I assume God osmosis into. I agree. To see you and say, come on, do it. And then he was just a nice guy. Come on. That's like. No, you know what? There's a lot of factors at play there. He could have had us. He could have said, I'm about to shit my pants and needed to leave right there, like right before you got there. Do you know what the biggest factor is? Thank God M17 did not exist. Otherwise, I would not have gotten my drink for my troubles and gotten the carriage. See, to do like it. there's a lot of. You it's know, you all, know what that is? God That's, was in the theater. God is in the room with us right now because that's the butterfly effect. And that was, oh, that's Nelson Mandela. That's the Nelson Mandela effect. Wait. That's the Mandela effect. Mandela. Okay, I got to mix up. Butterfly effect. I don't remember what I was going to say, it's how okay. that related at all. It's but that all right. was a butterfly effect. Yeah. It was nuts. That's awesome. But so 
in summary, that was better than my interaction with Matthew Greg Goobler, which has actually been keeping me up at night recently. No. Due to that being so bad. But it, this wasn't like, this isn't like my, this isn't what I'm going for. So I'm still learning. And what would you do better about that interaction? Just stop talking earlier on? No, I think you nailed it, honestly. I, it wasn't good. Uh, the staring for 10 seconds was hard. And I just like kept going. I, your, I think your, I need to think of picture. I think I need to think of one solid really good niche thing that I love that they've done leave it at that your cover of Bohemian Rhapsody cha- like that wasn't even like I don't know why I even said that I like, wasn't I that like was one of cool. his his like main contributions although it is remarkable I'll say that I thought it's good I mean okay. I, I can't really think of anything I think you, you nailed it at only having the one cocktail imagine if oh, you would have had three I know can you imagine no you would have been body bagged out of there you would have been wheelchaired out of there i know i would right, be back in m17 back in m17 rightfully so yeah yeah anyway i'm, I'm only getting better Mwah. yeah Mwah. In progress That's yeah great yeah yeah wow i also don't know like if you realize this would be like me in two years meeting andrew garfield like he was the the biggest crush i've ever had in my life yeah. jonathan a gay man ever. yeah of course yeah so that tracks. Oh, Jonathan, I miss him. I love him, and that was, and I, lo- and I could look at that forever. Let's frame it. Let's frame it and put it on there. We, yeah, we, we should. We should have it here. Yeah. Um. Well, do you have any questions for me? No, I think you nailed it. And you also, storyteller, much was that a nailed good it? Yeah, start to finish. Oh, not a dull moment. Oh my god. And we were on the edge of our seat. I didn't know you were in the room back there. I didn't oh, know you that, didn't know I was in the room where no, it happened. I, I didn't know about Mr. Bean. No, that was. Oh, good. Mr. Bean. Yeah, I loved him, even though he. Yeah, I loved him. Yeah, um, I also saw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yes. Which did you know? There's an eighth Harry Potter story that's written by J.K. Rowling. I didn't know there were seven Harry Potters. Okay, there's seven, and then recently, like when I was in college, J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter and the Cursed Child as a play. So it's like you buy. There's it. no book. It's a book, but it's a play. You know how plays are also in book form, and you just read it in the form of a play, like dialogue, like stage, right? Yeah, you like get, that's what you would be reading. What? It's just like lines. You're reading it in the form of like dialogue, not as like a story. Oh, Does that make sense? You're reading yeah. okay. and like stage direction. Like, okay. So that's what she came out with. And then it became a play, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So good. I read good. the book, but I forgot everything that I read the play, but forgot everything that happened. So Connor, the Dementors come out into the stage. Are they flying? They're flying. They're, t- they're like, you can feel them. You Are they over you? They're over you. They're coming Ooh, near cool. you. Your the hair. And how nice not to have to read that. You can just watch. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I would. I maybe. Uh, I don't know if you'd like it, but still, really I like cool. Harry Potter. Yeah, but you know what's kind of like the only criticism I have. So the eighth story, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, is about like Harry and Ron and Hermione's kids going to Hogwarts, but Harry and Ron and Hermione are in it as adults. But it's like, n- it's not aligned with the way that I feel like they would have been as adults. Like, it's like, that's not Harry. Mm. Harry wouldn't have said that. That's not my Harry. You know, that's not my, that's not my Harry. Well, so that's Daniel, my Daniel Radcliffe has changed a lot as well. I don't know if you've seen his Wolverine body recently. Do you know what Daniel Radcliffe is like doing shredded. right now? He has zero percent body fat and is like a gigantic man. He looks like Liver King right Wait, now. Wait, pull him up. He's in a play right now. Opening... On the seventeenth or the nineteenth, I forget. Called "Merrily We Roll Along," him and Jonathan Groff. Uh, but oh, you didn't see that coming. No, I didn't. Of course. Oh, oh right there, the bottom left picture. Do you think picture, he's looking at for "Merrily We Roll Along"? Because he's in like what? He looks like Sparta right now. Oh, he's doing Sparta right now. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, like what? Well, that's that's alarming because that's that's not a Harry Potter that I've. That's not my Harry Potter. That's not my Harry Potter. It's hard to look at. That's my Dementor, maybe. Oh my God, I can't. You would freak at the Dementors. Really? Yeah. Spooky. Um. Anything else from the trip? Um. Yeah. I put it in our notes. But I could just say it in bonus because they're not as good stories. You know what I mean? <sighs> Should we go to bonus? We can go, we can go to Bone Zone. I'll take I'll take one more shameless plug if I can have it. Oh yeah, wait, I have two things really quick that okay. I want to say. First thing is how often do you do you feel like you think about the Roman Empire? 
I just asked this question to my friends. Did you really? How often do you think about it? Uh, I just said he reminds me of Sparta, so that's one time today, so far. So you would say? Never. No, you would say never? No. Okay. I think about like the era of the Boston Tea Party a lot, because okay. I think that that seemed like a really fun event. Oh, okay. You're more of a Boston Tea Party guy. There's a trend on TikTok where it's girls asking guys how often they think about um, the Roman Empire, and every single guy says at least once a day. That's not true. Okay, you're breaking barriers. Gender okay, norm. Okay, men in the room, how how often do you guys think of the Roman Empire? Zero. We've got a zero. We've got a zero over here. Uh, okay, we once have a we have a weeks. once every couple weeks. Okay, never would that cross my mind. I don't I don't really get it either, but it is pretty unanimous that all of the guys are saying they think about it. Very I want to know how often Larry David thinks about the Roman. Oh wait, do you see my shirt? Oh, I love that Taylor Swift and Larry David and on a David, on a tee. I got a boyfriend. He's older than us. You could say that. Again. That's gorgeous. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I wonder if Larry has any recommendations for a good deli. I bet he does. Oh. Yeah, I bet he does. But he's a New York king, so. But he also wouldn't tell you about it, I feel like. You think he's a gatekeeper? Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. You said you had two things. Oh. Yeah. I, for, the other thing is, um, I just wanted to let you know, in terms of life hacks and ice, I saw someone eating Fruit Loops. Yeah. With milk. Once all the Fruit Loops were gone, they took the Fruit Loops milk, made ice cubes of the Fruit Loops milk, put it back in their cereal the next day. Mimi does that. Hank's girlfriend, Mimi. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's the same same concept. Um, there's also people doing that with overnight oats. Doing making taking, overnight taking, oat cubes. Taking the milk from their cereal, using that as with the oats. And then the oats taste like cinnamon toast crunch or what have you. Or in my in in my world, Applewood smoked sausage milk. Put that in my overnight oats, and then they taste like sausage. Okay. Last question for you. Yeah, hit me. How do you pronounce the word? And I'm going to spell the word out for you. Yeah. So actually, listen very closely. Ooh, big stretch. <laughs> He's passed He's out. So He's sweet. PTFO vibes. He's such a good boy. Okay, ready? How do you pronounce the word? I R R. E V O C A B L E. Irrevocable. Damn. How would you say it? The Twilight girls say irrevocable. Oh, that's because that's how she pronounces it in Twilight. So all people who like Twilight will say irrevocable, but it's pronounced irrevocable. Wh so you're saying it right, but I would always say irrevocable. <clears throat> I know some people who say comparable or comparable. I guess that I say comparable. No, you don't. I swear on my life. How is that comparable? How's that comparable? Oh, I don't know, I guess. But it's like science that Twilight people say irrevocable and non-Twilight people stay say irrevocable. You. Things stay with you. My camp that I went to every summer was called Incomparable Camp Ozark. So that's what I think about. You went to Camp Ozark? Yeah, I've told you that 50, Maybe that's 40, who I know that times. goes there. Maybe it's just you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's move to bonus then. I want to tell real quick. Okay. <laughs> but my my drink comes out with flying oh, embers. Oh yeah! By the time this comes out, I'll have announced it on my Instagram. That's exciting. And it will launch Friday. It's a spicy lime margarita, and it has zero sugar, and it has zero calories. Either calories or carbs. And at this time, I don't know that it's difference. carbs. Has to be carbs. Yeah. Or calories, maybe. It's like, well, if something has zero calories, it can't have carbs. Where can people buy it? I will post about that. Look at my Instagram, please, because I don't remember. It's there. It they'll be available good? online. Yeah, you'll taste it on Friday. Yeah. Didn't you say they have a Brook and Connor can? And it, yeah, and it has a call out to Brook and Connor on the back of the can. That's very cool. So I can't wait to see. It's it. It's not live on the site right now. I wish I could show it. I was gonna bring a can, and then my ass forgot because okay. I brought this damn dog. Right. He's dead asleep. He's dead ass asleep. Can you imagine being a dog that like? He's just like, oh, yeah, no, I'm in this place with, like, 15 people I've never met. Do you mind if I fall asleep on the floor? I love napping with people around. That feeling of, like, being alone together is one of the best. Alone? Let's go to the bonus, alone though. Alone together. Yeah. Alone Great together. Feeling. Great name for a podcast. Alone together. I'll, s I'll see we'll you in offline the, with you. See you in the, in the bonus. bonus. Bye. Bye. This week on Close Friends. 
Maybe some people haven't seen guinea pigs because they do look like a Pokemon. And then we keep the horrible stories for this because I think the people in this in this group message can can handle it and handle it and put the pieces together. I'm gonna Pavlov his ass off when we get home. How are you gonna Pavlov him? By being like, when we're on a podcast studio, you have to be well behaved. Something I was not gonna say in the main. Sign up on TMGStudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.